Hello and welcome to the Morales channel. This is Kronos for SimCity Web 3. The SimCity Web 3 sample game is already complete and using the Morales SDK. Kronos is the first ever EVM compatible chain built on Cosmos. This refactor will add the Kronos testnet to the SimCity game. Let's get started. Hi, my name's Sam. I'm a Unity certified developer at Morales. I have over 20 years of game dev experience and more than 10 years experience as a digital nomad. I love spending time in nature and practicing sports, as well as drawing, painting, and making music. Morales includes complete learning resources. To learn the fundamentals of what is Kronos and how it benefits your project, take a look at this video here. And click here to learn everything about Kronos for authentication and funding your account with a faucet. Here we'll take a look at an example that you can use in so many projects, setting up your wallet, funding it as well, and using it in-game for auth. And here we're refactoring an existing game. If you want to see more about that game and how it was originally set up, take a look at this video before moving on. Each Unity sample game is a complete and simple game experience. You get to see how Unity is used to create a complete game experience as well as plugging in with Morales technologies. Now let's take a look at the SimCity Web 3 sample game. The SimCity game has four key scenes. We start in the intro scene. This offers the main menu to the user. If the user is not authenticated yet, they would go into the authentication, take care of that, and come back to the main scene. There's also a setting scene, which is helpful in development. The user can reset their data so you can test out how the APIs are working for you. And then there's the in-game experience itself. This is where you add and remove properties to the 3D map. So at this point, where are we in the project status? Well, as I mentioned, the project is already complete. So we've stepped through the planning, the design, the development of both Unity and Web3, and what we're doing here is refactoring to add a new blockchain of Kronos. So what's on our to-do list? Well, we'll plan what the refactor will be, then we'll work on the contract portion, and finally integrate that into Unity. So why use Kronos? Well, Kronos is EVM compatible, and that's really helpful in this game because we already had deployed contracts that are EVM compatible. So the contracts themselves don't need to change at all. What we do here is deploy it to the new network, and it just works. Some other benefits of Kronos include that it's scalable, interoperable, it uses proof of authority, and it's open source. So after planning and choosing Kronos there as our blockchain, we're gonna step into the hard hat environment and deploy properly, doing any changes we would need to do in the contract phase. But as I mentioned, there's not much to do other than deploy properly here. Then we'll bring that change into Unity and allow the game developer inside Unity to choose which blockchain they want to connect with. In the original SimCity game video that I linked to earlier, you can take a look more about the architecture. But from a high level here, we have a very light implementation of model, view, controller, and service. Inside the service layer, we have a factory that will give us either the local disk storage version of the game that uses no Web3 technology and just writes to a local JSON file as you add and remove properties to the world. Then of course, if we toggle into the contract mode, we're able to take advantage of Morales, Web3, and in this case, Kronos. After this refactor is complete, our Unity game will be used in either Polygon Mumbai testnet or the Kronos testnet. The game experience only works in one at a time. You toggle that and you play the game. So it's important when you set up your Web3 wallet to deploy, to auth, funding your wallet, as well as signing any transactions, that through all that, you use one chain. Get that game experience to work great, then of course you can toggle over to the other. I had some confusing moments where I wasn't sure why there was a bug in my game. It turns out that I didn't have my MetaMask set to the same blockchain as Unity was at a given moment. So just double check that. Here we are in the GitHub where we can download and use this project. So that you can see me better during the live coding, I'm going to lower the opacity a bit. Here on this page, you can see the readme about how to get this set up into Unity and some other details that I'll skip over for the sake of the brevity of this video. Once we download this onto our machine, we have two core folders there. You can see them listed in the GitHub. 
We have a hard hat folder, which is what we're going to use for the hard hat section. And then inside the Unity editor, you'd open the Unity folder. Here I've opened that hard hat folder in a text editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Now, the first thing you want to look at is the instructions text. Stepping through this gives you the details you need to set up everything before doing your deployment. Skimming over the details here, I want to point something out. In some of the steps, I've shown an A or B option, depending which of the blockchains you're building for at any given time, because the game continues to support both, you're going to want to be aware of that particular sub-step. So if you're interested in building for Kronos, as you're going through the examples, just do the Kronos related steps. Now while in here, I tidied up several of the different files just from a best practices standpoint. But off the top of my head, the only one that really needs to change from our last implementation of the Polygon only version is this file here. This is the hard hat config. You can see quite a few sections, including this one that explicitly say Kronos testnet. Now there's nothing on this file for you to touch if you download this. Just be aware of anywhere you see that. That's new stuff that I've added just to get the Kronos testnet working. I'll open up the terminal to move forward with deployment. Okay, the deployment is completed. I skipped ahead on the video so you didn't have to wait, but it took a minute or two. So the important takeaway at the end of this is that you can capture the ABI and the address of the contract. That's that big blob that we see on the screen there. So I'll get into Unity and explain a few things, and then I'll be copying this here back into Unity so that Unity knows exactly where the contract sits so that it can contact the Kronos. Here we are inside Unity. Let's get started by looking at the README asset, which has some basic setup instructions. Here we see information about what is Morales as well as the getting started steps. At this point in the video, I've already set up the admin side, pasted that configuration inside to Unity. Together, we'll look at the configuration asset, but I've also added the scenes to the build settings. And in step six there, that explains the smart contract location and refers us to the same instructions text we just looked at when we were in Visual Studio Code. Now, before we press play, let's go ahead and look at that configuration asset. It shows us where in the project that sits. And we can select it here. And as before in the earlier version of this game, we have some high level configuration that we can do. The most important and relevant here is we can toggle which service type and then which blockchain we want to run on. We can choose the local disk storage version if we want an offline only non-Web3 version. This is a good place to start if you just want to learn the fundamentals of how that's set up. It's also nice and easy to develop there first in a new project before adding the complexity of Web3 and contracts. However, once we choose contract mode, we're given the additional option of which blockchain we want to perform on. And we've got two options here. We've got the Polygon Mumbai network that was already integrated, and then we've added the new Kronos testnet. Let's try the testnet and run and play the complete game. First, we'll load the intro screen, and then we'll run Unity. All right, here we are running the game. I have my Web3 wallet set up. I'm using MetaMask, and I've configured it for Kronos testnet. If you want more information on that, check out the Kronos authentication and faucet video that I linked to earlier. Let's go ahead and authenticate. Connect. Sign. And now we're authenticated. Let's check out the settings menu. The settings menu is meant mostly for debugging, but it's very useful. It shows that we have no properties yet for this account, which makes sense because we're just getting started, and it also lets you delete the properties, which is helpful for debugging too. Let's view the map and set some properties down. Here we have a 3D map, lets you scroll around in the world and pan. You can recenter back to the beginning. Choose a location where you want to add a property. Let's add one to this little island right here. And then with my Web3 wallet, I'm going to confirm the transaction. In this game, when you add, remove, and visit the settings to delete all properties, all three of those transactions require signing. So I sign now. 
I'll add one more property. Let's go over here and add one in this little park. This too requires a signature. Now let's go back to that settings menu and confirm that we have a couple properties. It looks good, we've got two properties. Let's double check the map that we've got those properties where we left them and then delete one just to confirm that functionality. There we go, we've got both of our properties here. Let's delete this one in the park. I'm going to confirm that transaction on the Web3 wallet. And that worked. So to recap here inside Unity, we've set up the Kronos testnet. We're running in Kronos testnet, and I have my Web3 wallet set to that as well. And we're able to play the game, add properties, remove properties, and see that reflected in the settings. That's all for Unity. Now let's look at the code behind this. I'm gonna do a quick tour of the few files that were edited during this refactor. You're invited to download the project and dig in, as well as watch that earlier, longer video about setting this project up originally. That's a great way to get oriented with how Unity speaks to contracts in general and how this game was constructed. So remember from the Unity inspector, we looked at that SimCity game configuration file. That file's here. The core addition here is adding a serialized field that is a chain list, and this chain list has exactly two viable options, as well as a default null. Because Morales supports many more than these two, it was important here for me to have the dropdown just show the compatible ones. So that's why I've set this up this way. Now when you choose that and then you run the game, it's the Web3 singleton here that takes that info and puts it into the proper context. So here we grab that chain list out of the configuration and we pass it into the factory. Now, remember from that diagram I showed earlier, this factory is what helps us decide if we are in the local disk mode, then run offline. And if we're in the contract mode, then speak with Morales to the contracts themselves. So now it's important that that chain list come along as well so the game can properly toggle between the two available chains. Here we are in the factory. Now most of the code we're looking at here already existed. I'm just now passing in that chain list. The contract service takes that chain list and finally it passes it to the property contract. Now historically the property contract assumed that Polygon Mumbai was used. So here finally after we pass in that chain list, here we're able to say if we're using the Polygon Mumbai, then use a certain set of details. And if we're using the newly added Kronos testnet, use a different set of details. You can see that running here. And then depending on the which way the code paths there, you're going to be picking up one of these two methods. Now together, we only pasted the Kronos testnet, but the steps if you wanted to populate the other half here for Polygon Mumbai would be to follow those instructions from the hard hat again, just exactly as they're described, and it shows the deployment instructions for Polygon Mumbai. Then you'd copy and paste that into here in that second method. So imagine running this uh, after you've downloaded it, you would need to run the deployment twice, once for Polygon Mumbai and once for Kronos Testnet. Visit this file and paste those values in, and then you'd be ready to go. This game would be able to be played with either of those two blockchains. But remember, it can only use one of the blockchains at a time, and it's important that your MetaMask or Web3 wallet be configured to a matching blockchain. So when I'm sitting down here to play with Kronos, I use the Web3 wallet set to Kronos. That's it for taking a look at the Unity editor as well as the Unity code. Next, let's look at the Gaming Metaverse Hackathon. Join the Morales Kronos Web3 Gaming Hackathon. Compete for a total prize pool of $100,000. Morales provides a single workflow for creating high-performance dApps. Kronos is the first ever EVM-compatible chain built on Cosmos. Register today and build on Kronos with Morales. To recap here, we've added the Kronos testnet to an existing Unity game. The game is set up using the Morales Web3 Unity SDK, and this transition was pretty quick and easy. 
You can imagine a larger project which would support even more blockchains. Or perhaps you'd work on one chain and support multiple currencies. You have lots of options with Morales. With Morales and Kronos, what will you build next? Visit docs.morales.io to download and get started. Thanks.